Greetings, folks. This video is actually for my mother. Eating Alive is the book, Prevention Through Good Diet. Dr. Matson. I considered eating one just to, just to change my life, but I uh, decided against it. And I, we're going to be going through chapter six. I, um, bear with me. It's, it seems important. We, we are at the Maple Regional Park. Greetings, beloved. Hang in there. Chapter 6, Diet. Let's begin with diet. The goal of diet should be to provide all the essential nutrients without aggravating the function of the digestive organs. Since we have found the stomach of almost everyone over the age of two, sometimes younger, to be in a state of shock, the thing to do is to remove the irritants so that the stomach muscle can de-spasm and regain proper function. The reason many people don't get improved stomach function from improved diet is that they haven't eliminated everything that aggravates the digestive organs. Consider the stomach as being like a young child who has been beaten ruthlessly since birth. It's been hidden in the attic, occasionally whimpering as you continue to torment it. So now we've learned the error of our ways and we're going to stop mistreating this sensitive little thing so that it can come down out of hiding and resume useful function. During the first few weeks, it's going to still be highly sensitive and the slightest abuse will send it scuttering, scuttering into spasm again. So care must be taken to avoid every single thing that, it, that bothers it. Once it's been fully in operation for a while and it is and is less sensitive, you may give it a little friendly snack once in a while without it going back into complete shock. In practice, I test every person on approximately 100 things using applied kinesiology, muscle testing, to see what is good and bad for their stomachs. If such testing isn't available to you, there are several general patterns that have shown up after using various testing methods on thousands of patients. Before describing these, I will repeat that a person with a major health problem still must seek out professional guidance as there are many obstacles to cure in severe chronic disease. Since some things show up as problems for virtually every person, it can only be assumed that these are, the, these are not foods. Let's call these... Non-foods, coffee, tea, chocolate, white sugar, alcohol. Group one, it includes coffee, tea, chocolate, white sugar, alcohol, artificial sweeteners, and preservatives, and salt, and tobacco. It takes little awareness to realize that the effect of most of these is as stimulants, not nutrients. They are used to, to whip an overloaded liver and or stressed adrenals into one more round of struggle. Unfortunately, their end result is to cause further weakness of the organs as well as thoroughly irritating the stomach. This is not new information, but it is still largely ignored by the majority of people. It goes without saying that it has only been in the last few years that tobacco has been recognized by Western medicine as toxic in spite of alternative practitioners speaking against it for over a hundred years. The fact that smoking is still increasing in some segments of society only shows our slowness to accept even the obvious. Many of us need to experience the full brunt of major disease before we will accept the need for change. Since disease is really a warning from the body that change is necessary, I find it is more beneficial to encourage some people to eat and drink in excess than to discourage them. Many people need to get to the physical breaking point before they become motivated to make changes. True. I find it interesting that when the stomach, intestine, liver slash gallbladder, and adrenals have fully recovered from the use of stimulants, there is much more energy 
than the false energy given by the stimulants. Without eliminating group one for at least three weeks, it will be virtually impossible, impossible to get the stomach de-shocked and back to work making digestive juices and sparking the intestinal tract back to life. Perhaps the one exception to the, that is tobacco. Tobacco does have a negative effect on the stomach, but its worst effects are on the lungs, liver, and arteries. It is usually possible to get the stomach back to work without quitting smoking, though the lungs won't recover until smo stop, blah, 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 smoking stops. Food sensitivity. Pay attention here, folks. Group two. Baking yeast, peanuts, brown sugar, cow products, and pork also show up for almost everyone. Group three contains wheat, tomatoes, brewer's yeast, and mushrooms, which show up frequently. Group four contains other things sometimes seen as problems, such as lamb, beef, chicken, turkey, eggs, shellfish, fish, soya, lemon, oranges, grapefruit, pineapple, apples, bananas, peaches, currants, raisins, apricots, strawberries, potatoes, squash, rye, oats, rice, corn, alfalfa, eggplant, carrots, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, celery, cucumbers, peppers, turnips, walnuts, cashews, brazil nuts, honey, maple syrup in group four, molasses, raw sugar, curry, garlic, vinegar, and onions. One reason why most diets don't actually improve the function of the stomach is that every single thing that irritates the stomach must be eliminated. If we go back to what we learned in part one, there are three ways that the stomach can be physically irritated. The first way is by putting into it things that aggravate it. Every one stomach is aggravated by the items in group one. Everyone's stomach is aggravated by the items in group one. Group two usually should be avoided as well for a time. A person with any signs or symptoms of disease should also avoid group three for a few weeks. A person with major disease should be tested to see if any items in group four cause problems. The second way the stomach can be, get irritated is from toxins spilled past the liver into the main bloodstream so that every cell in the body is irritated and thus sensitized. This also makes the stomach more sensitive to foods. The goal is to decrease these toxins by speeding up the digestion, slowing down the digestion of the critters and improving liver function. The third way the stomach can be irritated is by toxic bile from the gallbladder being dumped into the base of the stomach, duodenum, which can dramatically cause stomach, esophagus, and intestinal spasm and discomfort. Most people who complain of digestive symptoms are actually experiencing them from toxic bile irritation as the shocked stomach that we find almost everyone has since childhood, usually by the shock stomach that we find almost everyone has since childhood, usually is silent and symptom free since childhood. To decrease this irritation, the bile must be made less toxic by speeding up digestion, slowing down the unfavorable flora and improving liver slash gallbladder function. The function of the Iliosical valve, il iliosical valve is of extreme importance for this. And I must repeat that at least half of the patients I see who are on self imposed diets have aggravated this valve, the iliosical il valve. Usually the stomach will spontaneously de shock itself after a period of time without aggravation. And, be, and begin to function again. This time period may be anywhere from a few days to a few months. Generally, we allow three weeks, three weeks, my beloved, for the stomach to begin to function properly again. A person who is 
in reasonably good health should be able to get the stomach working by avoiding everything listed in groups one, two, and three for three to eight weeks, by which time all the digestive organs should be functioning well enough to add back two and three. Never one. I, that's not in the book. If the other steps outlined are followed diligently, the items listed in the first group are permanently a problem. Though, once the organs are detoxified and functioning well enough to add, to, 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 to add back two and three, if the other steps are... To, the items listed in the first group are permanently a problem. Though once the organs are detoxified and functioning at their best, a person may be able to withstand a little occasional abuse. I'll take a punch in the face every once in a while just for fun. That's not in the book either. After about three weeks, the foods in group four and three become less of a problem as the body detoxifies. Stick to group four. And there is usually little problem with them being added back. Anyone with a particular problem should be retested at this point to make sure that improvement is occurring before these two groups are added back. Patient's letters. I am a 69 year old lady who had been suffering from abdominal pains, periods of great physical weakness, lack of energy, and most distressing periods of confusion. As I have always been very energetic and clear-headed, I found this quite depressing. For some time, I had not been driving my car for the fear of making a mistake in traffic or getting lost. By the time I made my first appointment with Dr. Matson, I had already seen my regular medical doctor and specialists, none of whom could find anything wrong with me. I required my son to accompany me on the bus for my f appointments with Dr. Matson. Again, because I feared getting confused and lost on my way there. Dr. Matson improved several tests performed and prescribed a diet and neuropathic medicines. I found this difficult because I could not eat many of the foods I have eaten all my life. But I persevered. Although it took some time, I slowly noticed that my periods of weakness and confusion became fewer and less severe. After several months of treatment, I find that although I am not as well as I would like to be, I am very much better than before. I have dared to drive my car around the block a few times, take the bus to go shopping, and can again tolerate, within moderation, many of the foods I have missed. Mrs. K. Hamadan in Vancouver. This is a second testimony, or second letter from a patient. I first saw Dr. Matson in July of 1984 before giving up on conventional medicine regarding my physical condition. I had chronic indigestion, constant pain and discomfort, and a very low energy level. After Dr. Dr. Matson, after carefully listening to what I had to say and making the tests required, put me on a diet and gave me some supplements. I followed the diet for six months very accurately and began to notice changes in the first week. Very soon my energy level changed in such a way that I can honestly say I feel better than I did 10 years ago. After six months I did make the occasional mistake with my eating habits with no negative results at all. Two years have gone by now. I have never again had any problem with my digestive system. Headaches that I thought were related to a previous brain surgery have disappeared as well. I have just returned from a trip to Europe where for three weeks I kept no diet at all and I'm amazed to realize that my system did not react in any negative way. The reinforcement that my special diet provided me with on, my, on the trip encouraged me to go back to the strict diet in order to cleanse myself from what I basically consider junk food and food combinations. I am deeply thankful to Dr. Matson for my well-being and I have referred many other patients 
to him and will continue to do so. Yours truly, Marianne Habler, also from Vancouver. Yes. So, um, eating alive, uh, I like it. God bless.